Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, A. You know what time it is. What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? You already know it's Real Talk Wednesday. What's up, y'all? Happy Wednesday when y'all are watching this. Happy Thursday. Happy Friday. Happy morning. Happy afternoon. Whenever y'all are watching this, I'm praying that you all have a blessed and amazing day. You know, y'all woke up this morning. So what else can you say? Listen, let me tell y'all something. Every morning when I wake up, I just, you know what? I feel like this. It's a blessed day. I've been blessed to wake up because I do not want to be below ground. Okay. I know that time is going to come, but I feel blessed. And I thank y'all all for coming through with your girl A because we're about to talk shit like we always do on Wednesday. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? What's up? So hope y'all are having like a really great day. It's getting nice out. I went for my walk this morning with my dog. She overweight too. Okay. You know, my baby, she is overweight too. She got her little pudge belly too. And so it was so funny because when I take her for a walk now, my Mind you, I worked like a mile and a half, okay? And I didn't get to walk at all last week because I had a lot of things going on. But, you know, so I, I hadn't brought her. I, I wasn't bringing her all the time. You know, she would stay home with Tati and just chill with Tati. You know, Tati works um, nights, so she would stay home with her. Well, I went for my walk. Now, mind you, when I went for my walk, um, I normally would take her. Now I take her again. And I also bring her dog stroller because she gets tired. And I don't know about y'all, but I am not about to be carrying no dog the halfway home. My arms will get tired. So I let her walk until she get tired. And then, you know, I put on her little doggy stroller. So this morning we walk in, okay, and we on a walk path. And um, she already got tired. Like, we have walked a, like a half a mile already. So she got tired. And it might have been more than a half a mile, you know. So she got tired. I put her in a stroller. Now we walking toward this lady who's walking toward us. She got herself a little chihuahua. And she got a stroller. Now, mind you, I can see her, but I don't really know what kind of stroller it is. I know she's, like, elderly, but I don't know if it's a grandkid in there. I can't really tell until we get up on each other. Girl, why she had her dog walking and her little dog stroller? So we start laughing at each other, like, in a pleasant way. You know what I'm saying? And she like, wait, do you walk her half the way until she gets tired? I said, I sure do. And then I put her in the stroller. I said, because I am not about to be carrying her. The little old lady was like, oh, hell no. She just quickly said, oh, hell no. And she said, this thing come in handy, don't it? I said, I love the dog stroller. I said, because I take it with me whenever I go somewhere, like out in public, I'll take her dog stroller with me, depending on where I'm at. You know, like if I go to Target or whatever, I'm bringing her and I'm putting her in a, in a, in a, in a buggy, in a shopping cart, you know. Um, but if we are at like stores, like at a plaza, like, you know, like an outlet or it just depends on where it's at. She and her little dog stroller. Everybody gets so amazed. Like y'all ain't never seen no dog in a dog stroller. Sometimes I've been getting those little side eyes looking at me like I'm crazy and weird. Like I wish I had kids. Baby, I have them. I have enough of them. Okay. But I just thought it was like the coolest thing because I've never seen anybody walking their dog and pushing the dog stroller except for myself. So that's what we did this morning. Then I went to the post office and mailed off some wigs. If y'all are wondering about the wigs, there are some on there. Um, they might be a little bit pricey for some people, but listen, y'all know I, I do more than half off. So one of the wigs was worth $789. You know what I'm saying? From RPG show. Of course it's $300 on my website. Of course it is. It's even less than half off. You know what I'm saying? And then there's one from Wild African, which is like a $500 wig. Of course it's $200. You're still in the deal. They're, fi- they're worn for like 15, 20 minutes. So what can I say? But there is some, it'll be a couple more added in case you guys are wondering, because I had someone ask me and basically tell me where I'm about to put those wigs up for sale. Y'all know what I say about water. Okay. But anyway, other than that, I hope y'all have like a great weekend. You know, it's Monday right now. And um, by the time this video goes up, it'll be on Wednesday. Last Friday was my daughter Tati's birthday. She turned 28. Uh, I had the kids while she went out and hung out with her friends. She really don't get to hang out too much. So I was so happy for her that she had like a really great time. You know, she had a really great time with them. You know, it's my stepson, Wuzzles, my son Wuzzles' brother, um, because they live here with his girlfriend. That was Wuzzles' best friend. So Wuzzles' brother, step half brother, and Wuzzles' best friend, um, are has been a couple for her, God knows how long. Um, and she also Wuzzles' best friend. She also braids hair for a living. Um, so she does hair. She does hair. So if you live in Arizona, you need your hair braided. Leave the comments below, and I will definitely give you her information. Because when I tell you she do some nice braids girl everybody in my house go get their braids done there so anyway y'all okay so i had a couple of emails um let me see i got a couple of emails but um I got a, i'm gonna be doing two emails today for the real talk but yeah so like i said last week was tati's birthday she had a really great birthday last week also i had to go to the doctor's office you know what i'm saying i had to go see dr rachel my new doctor she's an amazing doctor but sometimes i feel like she's a little bit too nosy just a little just a little bit and i know it's all for health reasons but goddamn girl i didn't have this much treatment and this much um love and, and support 
support at the other doctor's office. So I really wasn't used to it. So she had me prepare myself for this. And the appointment did come up, which was my um, pap smear. Now, mind you, you know, I had a full hysterectomy in 2018, November 29, 2018. Y'all probably like, well, how do you remember the date? Because that's my sister's birthday, 2000, and, well, not 2018, but her birthday is November 29th. So I had it on her birthday, you know what I mean? And I remember the year. So, you know, I had a full hysterectomy. I don't got nothing left. So, you know, um, I, I, I did have a pap smear after that, like a couple of times. But um, I hadn't had one in like probably like four years. So when she asked me, so when I went in, you know, her assistants, they would ask me, well, do you have any STDs? And I was like, well, first of all, she said to me, uh, when's the last time you had your period? And I'm like, like five years ago. And she was like, is everything OK? Yeah, I had a full hysterectomy. She's like, oh, OK, I see that. And she was like, OK, um, are you sexually active? And I was like, no. And she was like, um, when's the last time you've been checked for STDs? I said a while ago, a long time ago. The last time. Um, um, that I had in course was in 2020 by October. So I don't think I got anything. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Then she asked me the past me and I was like, I couldn't remember. So when Dr. Rachel had came in, she was like, I'm gonna have to get that. And I was like, great. I don't want nobody in my private area. Like, you know, it's, I just don't want nobody right there. So anyway, when I went to the appointment, man, I had to deep breathe. Like, I'm like looking at her. She's looking at me. She was like, you know, what's about to happen. I was like, I'm looking at her. She's looking at me. Why you got somebody else in the room too? Okay. And I guess you do have to have another person in the room because this is what, you know, in case the patient tries to say anything. Girl, I said, how long is this going to take? Like, really, how long is this going to take? She was like, like a minute, less than a minute, April. I was like, oh, okay. Girl, she was like, could you just... Let me tell you something. When you get like a certain age, you really just don't want people down there. You just don't want anybody... Just, just stay away from that area, okay? But I'm not even using it to stay away from that area. But it was, it was, it was a, it was a Wusan moment. Plus, also, you know, she just gave me my results, like with my blood test. I don't know why my blood pressure is still high, even after this new prescription. It is like really, like high. So I have to log this every day when I wake up, do my blood pressure, and then log it because she needs to see this for like oh two weeks so she can see if I could switch over to another medication. Then, um, what was I about to say? You know, she said, you almost close to being diabetic, but you're not, which was a great thing. But because my blood pressure is so high, it's messing with my kidneys. I never knew that because if you have constant high blood pressure, that it will mess, excuse me, it will interfere, mess with your internal organs. I never knew this. I know that it messes with your heart, but I never knew that it would mess with your kidneys. Never knew this. So, you know, my kidney results didn't come back great. Um... And she's trying to see what type of medication she can give me for my blood pressure so that my kidneys, you know, be okay. But other than that, you know, I still can't get the fetramine diet um, weight loss pill like I used to take because my my blood pressure is too high. So, you know, I'm just going to keep on, keep on, on, you know, going for my walks, you know, that type of shit. But that was that was my last week. That's what I did last week. And, uh, you know, <laughs> that pap smear um, checkup was uh, something else, girl. Yeah. I don't know if that's a thing that I would want to do once a year. Um, but I was really kind of like, please, please, please just hurry up. Okay. That's like me with the dentist. You know what I'm saying? That's like me with the dentist. I, I have like a, a boundary. You know what I'm saying? I do have a boundary, but okay. So also, um, one of my subscribers, it's not like a, this is definitely not a real talk, but she sent me this quick email because she wanted to know some things about me and okay. I'm, I'm really happy to share my information and such with you. Okay. So, Hey April, this is just a quick email. I would like to ask you, would you give your ex-husband slash ex-boyfriend another chance if he got himself back together and did the right thing? I'm curious because I'm debating giving my ex-husband another go and not really sure if I should. Also, can you please share these things about yourself? Your favorite food, your favorite musician or band. What is your favorite what is your favorite beauty product you use all the time? Love Khadija. Okay, so first of all, to the to the quick email about would I give my ex-husband slash ex-boyfriend another chance? The answer is hell no. Okay, I don't care if he got himself back together. That's his business. That's good for him. If that's to happen for him, the, the answer is no. You ever you ever realize like you give a person a chance and then you give them another chance. And then, then you have people in the back of your ear and in the back of your head and in your mind telling you, girl, you too good for him. Why you give him another chance? He don't deserve you. Why you with him? You too cute. You too pretty to be with him. Things like that. You know, I've had that. I've had that. I've had that said to me on like ample enough times, uncountable enough times I've had that said to me regarding him. And yet still, you know, regardless of the embarrassment that he has given me or the heartache that he has given me, I have given him ample enough chances. And so the last chance, which was back in like 2017 when he moved here was what, 2018 or 19, something like that. Um, that was, you know, after the divorce and I gave him a chance. And even though everybody, even including my mom was like, don't get back with him, don't get back with him. I did. And 
I just feel like this. God do things to you for, for you for a reason. He said to me, well, we've already done warned you not to get back with him. We've already told you this, but you have to see for yourself, yourself self. So I'm going to give you this time. I'm going to allow you to see what it is like. And you're going to be finally through. And so that's what happened. You know, like I had enough chances. I gave him enough chances. Excuse me. I gave him enough chances. And I've heard enough people tell me like not to get back with him. He's not for you. You too good. I've heard that, you know, and sometimes you just can't go off of what people tell you. You have to see for yourself. And so that that time was enough for me. That allowed me, God allowed me to see, girl, there's no way. You should just listen to everybody else. But and so no, hell fucking no. No, 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 no. I wouldn't give him another chance. I wouldn't give a damn if he got himself together. Everybody should get themselves together. That ain't got shit to do with me. That seems like a you problem, not a me problem. That is not my problem. And I don't want the problem. So no, I wouldn't give him another chance. But see, your ex-husband and mine are two different people. So I wouldn't really know. But if he's an alcoholic and all of that, then girl, don't give him another chance. Just run for the border, baby. Run for the motherfucking border, okay? This, if he's not like that great of a dude, then there's a reason why you call him your ex-husband. There's a reason for everything. And so, no, I wouldn't give him another chance. Next. So on to the next thing. Khadija, you want to know what my favorite food is? Hopefully I remember to put a picture of it. But my favorite food is a salad, okay? It is a salad. And it consists of bacon, like real bacon strips, okay, that I that cook myself. Uh, grilled chicken that I cook myself. And sometimes I put shrimp in it. Sometimes I won't that I cook myself. And it is spring greens that I use. I will put some chopped onions in it. Uh, I will cook my chicken in ranch dressing, okay? And my shrimp in ranch dressing. I put chopped onions. It doesn't matter if purple or white. And sometimes I put cucumbers and I also put tortilla strips for salads in it. That's it. Um, and a little bit of sprinkle of cheese. That is my favorite thing to eat. I love a good salad. Kid you not, I love a good salad. Even though I'm a hefty girl, I love a good salad. Um, what is my favorite band or musician? Well, geez, my favorite band, they're no longer, is um, Mint Condition. I love Mint Condition, okay? My favorite band is Mint Condition, and I play their songs like they are in Mint Condition. And my favorite musician, well, which is Prince and Michael Jackson. Those are my two favorite musicians. I know you said Frank Fritz, but I got musician, but I got musicians. Those are my two favorite. And if I was to choose which one would I like more, Prince or Michael Jackson? I don't know. They're like a tie. They are definitely a tie for me. Um, I can't choose. So definitely a tie for me. And what else? What is my favorite beauty products you use all the time? So last week, you know, I guess it's supposed to be a trend now because the next person is asking me what my favorite beauty products was. Last week, was it my favorite items or favorite products to use? So they didn't matter if it was beauty or not. What do I like to use the most? Well, this time it's beauty products. And let me tell you, I don't really use a lot of beauty products because I don't really like to wear a lot of makeup, like I said last week. But if I am going to be looking cute during the daytime... And I do see a lot of people that ask me where I get my lashes from. And I'm going to put the link. But I get my lashes from Amazon. Amazon, Amazon. And it's by this brand right here called Fry Happy. Okay? It's by a brand called Fry Happy. Let me see if I could get that right there for you guys so y'all can see it. It's by a brand called Fry Happy. Okay? Now, how I found this on Amazon was after returning several pairs of strips. And I came across them. And I loved them ever since. And I love their strips. So these are the ones. And these are where I get my strips from. And I have three different types that I like to use from them. But the ones that I wear on an everyday basis, every day, every day, every single day, are these ones right here. These are the ones that I have on right now. These are the ones that I wear every single day. And they are on a clear band, OK? Sometimes I might take a mascara spoolie and brush them out a little bit. But I love these. They're clear band. They come with five. Each strip right here will last me like a month, okay? I wear them like five days a week. I make sure to take the glue off the strip at night. But these are my favorite. And then I also do wear these from them also. These look a little bit different. They are more angled. And I'm going to put them side by side so that you guys can compare them. So you see the difference in them? Now, I don't wear these as much because these, to me, are a little bit more fuller. These are also another ones from Fry Happy. And the last one that I also wear from Fry Happy, if I'm feeling really, like, you know, glammed up, are these right here. And these are a little bit bigger. But I love them all. They all have clear bands. They all look natural. I think the first ones that I use, that I wear on every day, look the most natural out of all of them because they have a little curl. I love these lashes. 
the most. So those are my everyday go-to beauty products when it comes to the lashes that I wear. And I'll definitely link them below because I do see a lot of comments about my lashes. And I also thank you guys too for the comments on my lashes. I, girl, listen, I like for them to look natural. Yes, I'm not about to be walking out the house looking like a drag queen. So the second thing that I like to use for beauty products is this. Now, this is not, I don't use this in my hair. I don't, I don't use this in my hair. I use it on my eyebrows because I'm not about to pay $26 for no Anastasia brow gel that you don't even get much of when I could just use this okay so I use this with a spoolie I have a one particular spoolie that I just keep for this I'll end up picking the glue off at the end of the month or whatever but this is what I use on my eyebrows and it keeps my eyebrows in place girl this will last you for a long time if you're just using it on your eyebrows so this is what I use on my eyebrows like right now it's on my eyebrows okay um to fill in my eyebrows my favorite go-to all the time is this NYX pen right here which is the lift and sculpt brow now I can't really tell you if who's at my Sorry door about that. I thought someone was at my door but it was actually my daughter Nate going to get her lunch she's on a lunch break this is my favorite go-to brow pencil um pen this is by NYX it's the lift and sculpt lift and snatch um brow tint pen Whew, I'm out of breath and I use this because it gives me like really natural brows I use the color espresso I wouldn't say well you can find this at Ulta um Target but I never can find my color at either one of those places. So I end up going to Amazon and getting it. Now also to hold my lashes on, believe it or not, I like this. This is Shop Miss A's eyelash glue. You get four of them in here for $10. Let me tell you, you know where I get these from? Amazon, just Shop Miss A. Put Shop Miss A um, glue and you'll get this for $10 at um, Amazon. You get four of them. And it'll last me a few months. Now also, the reason why I started using this instead of my, what was the other one called that I used to use? Duo Wand, because Duo Wand was like $6 for one and it didn't even last as long, like, you know what I mean? This stuff is just as good, if better, okay? The one thing I will say though, with any eyelash glue, the older it gets, the thicker it gets, the better it gets. That's 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 all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. And also for those who have mole rat lashes, like you know, mole rat, if I don't have my lashes on, I look like a mole rat. But if I don't feel like putting my lashes on, girl, get this, get this. This is the Revlon Big Bad Lash. This will have your mole rat lashes looking like somebody's lashes. Your lashes will be lashing with this. I love this stuff. This is, I like the bristle on it, but it doesn't have anything to do with the brush because I'm really funny about certain brushes. It has the fact that there's some type of fibers on this. I don't know. It's not like those little fibers that fall off, but it just, this is just like some really good mascara. And also this one right here, which is the Falsies by Maybelline. So real. I love this one too, but if I had to choose, I would definitely choose just this one right here. Okay. Just this one right here. And then I also like to use these which are the ball um, wands, the ball mascara, roller ball ma mascara ones. I like these because for one, these are perfect for your bottom lashes. I use these all the time for my bottom lashes. These work amazing for my bottom lashes. So I just dip them in, you know, and use them for my bottom lashes. These are really, really great. And then I also use them for underneath my lashes when I have my, you know, strips on. So I do love these. These are an everyday thing. You can get these for like, you get a hundred of these on Amazon. I use those and this is a, another beauty product that I'm going to swear by because let me tell you something, okay? So nobody likes to have no dry ass lips, okay? I have one of these in my car, one of these right here on my desk, and one in my purse. Like seriously, I don't like no dry ass, crusty ass lips. Like if my lips look dry, please somebody tell me. If I look like I'm dehydrated, please somebody tell me. Also, this is also one of my favorite beauty products. And I've been using this forever, for years. It's the only thing I use to clean my face with, which is the Noxzema. But this is the Walmart brand. Honey, they all the same. It works just as well. It's good. So if you want to clean your face really good, try some Noxzema or get the Walmart brand or the Target brand. They work really well. I've been using this all my life, so I don't really know what to tell you. It works well. And to remove my eye makeup, my two favorites are Neutrogena, which is the makeup oil eye remover, or Glory and Soap, Soap and Glory's eye makeup remover jelly. This one, I do like. This one, I do love. I've been using this all my life. You know, I don't just use it for eye makeup. I use it just to remove my makeup because it's just oil. So I do like this. And that's the stuff that I like to use, y'all, on my beauty products. So Khadija, I hope that was helpful to you. Everything that I use is not really expensive at all. 
I'm just a basic girl. Basic, basic, basic. Time for some water. Now, last week, I did share my favorite products to use, and I put this link on here. Girl, these were $14 when I shared the link. I don't know how much they are now, but I think they only had like two colors or one color, which was blue. I wouldn't care what color it was. But if you're still interested, go back to last week's video and get it because I got it from Amazon. I love this water cup. You know, I'm promoting water. You gotta drink your water, stay hydrated. It helps with your health, okay? Water, 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 water. Now also I wanted to send a huge thank you for, to everyone who has um, sent gifts from the baby registry. Thank you guys so much. Amazon is driving me crazy. I'm gonna have to call them because you know there was a way that you could thank a person, but I'm not finding that. I'm not finding that. that to that way I can thank you guys. I'm not finding that. So I'm going to have to give them a call. And I hate to call them sometimes because half of the time, the people that you talk to on the line don't even know what they're talking about. So I've been trying to find where is the link to where you can thank the person for each item. I'm not finding that like I did before for my granddaughter. So I want to say thank you to those who have sent some things. And I just want to say thank you for the love and support. And like I asked last week, my daughter-in-law is having her fourth son in June. June 5th is the due date. Let's hope for June 19th on my B-Day. But he will be a Gemini, so that's all that matters. He has a Gemini's rule. But anyway, some people don't like Gemini's. But I hope you guys like me. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who has donated to the baby shower. And please, you guys, check it out if you haven't. There are a lot of affordable things on there. You know, if it's pricey, I'm not putting it on it because I ain't buying it. But I would just really appreciate if any one of you guys could just donate to her baby shower. I'm trying to surprise her with some things. You know, it's rough being a mom. And then she's going to have a fourth baby. So I just ask you all just to donate something small. There are little items on it there that are not pricey at all. And I just appreciate and am grateful for whatever you guys can donate to her baby shower. And I will link it below. And once again, I want to say thank you to those who have. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you. Just thank you so much. Some people don't realize the little things matter. And very grateful. I'm very grateful for you guys' love and support. So I thank you all for the love and support. And just check it out for me if you wouldn't mind, please. But on that note, let's get into this real talk. Because I think I talked about arrows enough. Yappity, yappity, yap. Okay? That's, that's all I've been doing is yapping, yapping, yapping. Okay? So let's get into to this real talk okay y'all yes So it's real talk time. You already know the deal. If you want to real talk about you or someone you know in your family, friends, a community, or workplace, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk. Also, you can also use my other real talk email, which is aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject, subject line real talk as well. If you want to go ahead and change the names of the people you were talking about in this email or yourselves, please go ahead and do so. Let me know. If you don't care, then okay, we shall share. Let's get into this real talk. So she didn't subject line this real talk, nosy, troubling neighbor. Okay. Hi, Miss April, Divas and Devos. Thank you so much for reading my situation. You can call me Grace because that's what I feel I keep giving to this one individual person. I live in an apartment complex here in Texas, so not too far from you, Miss April, and I seem to have a troll in my complex that I honestly am about to knock her head off the block. I <laughs> just feel like I'm too old for this bullshit, but you know what? I'm here for it. So my neighbor, you can call her Hoesha because she acts just like a 304 in the complex. My thing is this, speaking to your neighbors never hurt. It never hurts to say good morning and keep it moving. And that is what I do with half the people here. I'm not giving them my time like that because this is where I live. We are all not going to be friends or besties, nor am I wanting an uninvited guest. 
So Hoesha lives two townhouses down. So it's not really apartments, it's townhouses. But honey, they are the size of apartments, LOL. So Hoesha been living here for a little over two years. And me, my husband, and my son, who is 19 years old, have been living here for over 11 years. We had the opportunity to purchase our townhouse and make upgrades. So anyway, you know, I am older since I have a 19-year-old son. I am 46 and Hoesha is 39. She has one child, also a girl who is 16. Now, Miss April, I understand my son is going to have the ladies holler at him. He's a handsome young man. About a month or so after Hoesha moved here, I started saying good morning to her. She would reply back the same. Well, one day we actually stood outside and had a full-blown conversation. And it wasn't about much, just the area, how she likes living here in the complex, how she likes living in Texas since she recently moved from Boston to Texas. Fast forward two years later at the present moment. There was a particular day that me and my son were coming from the parking area and she saw us. She spoke to both of us. My son walked ahead of me and went into our home while I stood outside and spoke with her for a few moments. The conversation started getting weird to me after a good five minutes. Like I said, my son is a handsome young man. I do expect the young girls to try to approach him, but not this old cougar ass bitch. Oh, we should begin to tell me how my son is definitely a cutie. And if her own daughter don't try to push up on him, then she's going to try to push up on him herself. I looked at this bitch like she had three heads and said, excuse me. What did you just say? She tried to laugh it off, I guess, and said, girl, no, I'm just saying he's a cutie. That's all. After that, I smirked and told her I had to go inside and get dinner ready for my family. I spoke to my husband about what she said about our son, and my husband laughed it off as if it was a joke. So recently, this lady has been coming outside with the shortest shorts on, standing out front of her place doing nothing, and it always seems like when my son is coming home from work, she just decides to go outside and just stand there. She has been approaching my son, telling him how good he looks. Does he want to come over and smoke some weed with her? Also inviting him to check out her daughter's gaming system because her daughter is a gamer. Inviting him to their barbecue in the backyard, as well as she has tried to invite him out to eat. My son has been telling me all this stuff, plus then some. She has even taken it so far as to come knock on my door, asking if my son was home because she wanted to know if he could check her oil level in her car since she seen him checking his one day. When she came to my home asking me that on that particular day, she had on some Daisy Dukes, shorter than daisies, and some tank top with her boobs halfway hanging out. I looked at her and said, my son is here, but he's not your mechanic. So I suggest you go to a car service and have it checked out and stop asking for my son as well as talking to him because your ass is way too old for him and he ain't interested in you or your damn daughter. She tried to explain herself, but I was not allowing her to do so, and I slammed the fucking door in her face. A few weeks after that, I come home from work. Now, mind you, you get you get two parking spaces per resident, and you can also pay for uh, monthly as there are spaces just for that. So my husband pays for his parking space monthly because it's a third space. Well, each space that is occupied by a resident has a number on it, so you know which space is yours. This lady knows that However, I come home one day from work and my space is being occupied by another car. I wasn't sure as whose car it was, nor was I about to go knocking on any doors to find out. As it clearly says on a sign, your car will get towed if you are in the wrong space. So I call the tow number on the sign. Within 15 minutes, they come and hook the car up to the tow truck. Well, I guess the noise and movement of the tow got Hoesha's attention because she came running outside telling the tow guy to drop the car. He informed her he works for the complex and they have guest parking up front. Also, in order to drop the car, there is a fee of $125. This bitch came running up on me saying, why did I call? I could have knocked on her door, et cetera, et cetera. I let her know I was not knocking on any doors because I don't have to. She knew this space was mine, so why allow your guests to park in my spot. She has one car, so she let the one guest park in her extra spot and then also in mine. When I tell you we had a shouting match in the parking lot, 
The car was dropped because they had to pay for it. Hoisha trying to tell me I should pay a third part of the tow. Listen, Miss April, I'm not paying for shit, but I'm tired of her raggedy ass still trying to flirt with my son. And now every time I run into her in our complex, she says smart shit like, I'm still waiting on your portion of the money or shit like, where your fine ass son at? I'm ready to dig my fingernails into her eyeballs. My husband is telling me to just ignore her or report her to the rental office. I can agree, but serious, she's ratchet. Outside twerking in the parking lot while her 60-year-old either records her or joins her. She talks loud always. I'm over her, Miss April. Please help. Sound like somebody got a lot of problems, okay? I don't know if it's Hoesha or if it is Grace, okay? But Grace seemed like she gonna get in trouble if she don't leave this lady the fuck alone. So we got Hoesha here, and I like how she named her Hoesha. Hoesha. Hoesha is a 304, okay? I mean, I'm not really sure, but that's what Grace is telling us. And she been, yeah, she's a, she's a 304. She 30, how old is she? Hoesha is 39 years old, going after Grace's 19-year-old son, and she can already warn her time and time again to stay away from my son, don't speak to him, he don't want your old ass, and he don't want your daughter. How you gonna tell somebody if my daughter don't push up on your son, I truly am. I think if somebody was to say that to me, that was like in my age bracket or a little bit younger than me, I think I might have to slap the fucking taste out your mouth. Like, seriously. I think that would have been the moment right there where I would have smacked the fucking teeth out of her mouth. Like, she would have been walking away with some missing teeth just like me. Like, I mean, she ain't knocking my teeth out, but the little bit of teeth that I lost, she gonna be walking away just like that. She gonna have some missing teeth out of her mouth. I'm gonna I'm a smack her so hard, her lips and her teeth are gonna fly the fuck out of her mouth. Like, straight up. Off her face and out her mouth. Like, straight up. Who tells what grown-ass woman that's in their 30s? This bitch is, what, 38, 39? Let's round her off. Bitch, you about to be 40, and you talking to another 40-year-old woman who is 46 talking about if my 16-year-old daughter don't try to push up on your 19-year-old son than I am? I don't even think I would have had time to react verbally. I think I would have just smacked the shit out of her. I, I think I would have just smacked the shit out of her. Because for one, he's 19. He's not 21. And for two, you 36 years old. You're an old-ass cougar. And for three, you fresh and smart at the fucking mouth. Who the fuck says some shit like that? This is what I be talking about about people. Sometimes you can't really make this shit up. I be, I be surprised and shocked at the shit that I read, that people send me, that people email me. I be surprised and shocked at the shit that people send me. Like, what what grown-ass woman in a ripe age of, we, we're going to call her 40, going to say you're going to push up on somebody? Like, there are some things that I really can't get over, and it's the lingo that some people that be in a ripe ages be using. Like, when you have children, I really don't think that you should be calling your children bruh. Bruh. Like, who does that? I see enough people on YouTube, on apps, they be grown like me, and they got their kids calling them bro. Or they calling their kids bro or bro, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Or girls are calling each other bro. Or they calling their mama bro. Like, I, I would dare one of my kids to call me bro. All right? If you call me bro, you ain't going to have no lips, bro. Okay? I'm not about to, you know, this is what I've been talking about. And push up, I would never say, oh, I'm about to push up on him. I just wouldn't. I just I just couldn't. Like, what the fuck? I just, I'm just not. But you 39 years old and you telling some 46-year-old woman that you're going to push up on their 19-year-old son. I wish a bitch would. Okay? I wish a bitch would. Now, my son, he 30. He 31. Okay? And... I'm just saying this, okay? If somebody my age was to say to me, I'm going to push up on your son, I still would have a problem with that. Because first of all, don't stand here and be disrespectful to me and tell me what the fuck you're going to do to my child. I'm just not with it. So it doesn't really matter the age, but it's the audacity of people, the audacity of women. And at the ripe age of damn near 40, you would think that you would have a little bit more class. Now, she got this woman out here in a, in a complex twerking <laughs> it's the no class for me you know something i don't know if the internet be having people's brains scrambled and scraped and fried but it just seems like people do just about anything these days for attention and it's sad because all of this twerking and shaking your ass on the screen on the phone on the social media it is so old and tired like straight up i am so tired of seeing a bunch of asses just jiggling all the time whenever i'm scrolling and, and swiping like i'm so over it like just please can we just have a little bit of class and on top of that you in the parking lot where people live 
fucking twerking and shaking your rump shaker while your 16 year old daughter is recording you. that you cannot tell me that that is not motherfucking embarrassing there's no way that you can tell me that that is not fucking embarrassing if that was my mama i would i would go off on her and i wouldn't even stand there and record her but then she also allows the the 16 year old i was about to call it 14 the 16 year old to join in and twerk with her y'all can't do that inside like, I'm just saying, y'all cannot do that inside. Y'all got ample enough space. I get it. She said the townhouses are small like apartments. But I'm pretty sure y'all, y'all don't really need much space to twerk. I'm just saying. You're not jumping all over the place. So you could just do that inside. Take your twerking, sweating asses inside with your coochie cutters on and do that inside. But then Grace also said she'd be doing this around the time her son comes home from work or wherever he's coming from. I think she's at work. So we got mama and daughter ho outside twerking and whoever get to him first, whoever can smash or, or push up on him first and whoever he, you know, accepts is the one he gonna accept. Girl, let me tell y'all, that old lady probably would love to have that young man. She inviting him over to smoke weed, barbecues, out to eat, come check her daughter's gaming system. They probably going to kidnap him, hold him hostage up in there, okay? That's what they trying to do because the daughter think he look good and the mama think he look good. They don't probably care. They'll share, okay? That's probably what the fuck they'll do. It's one thing for the 16-year-old to do that because she's a kid, and that's just what young kids and young girls do. But when you're 39 about to be 40 and you telling somebody else that you about to push up on a 19 year old son girl you deserve to get your fucking teeth smacked okay you deserve to get your lips smacked the fuck off so that way you know for the next time not to say that to nobody but here's the thing grace your husband is kind of right you should report her to the, the rental office because she didn't buy her townhouse you did you that's your permanent home not her she can easily be evicted i mean i'm just saying i would definitely make a complaint about her i would definitely report her i, I definitely would report her the next time she come knocking at your door probably not gonna knock at your door anymore but the next time you see her in a parking lot and she's asking you about some payment for the car that beats that was almost towed let her know if you can get blood if you can get blood from a stone then that's the day i'll give you your fucking money okay straight up if you can get blood from a stone then that's the day i'll give you my third of the fucking portion of the toe until then you're not getting shit from me all right don't stand outside listen let me tell you something it's one thing to stand in a parking lot and argue with somebody it's not even worth your time. It's not even worth your energy. Sometimes you just got to walk away and be the bigger person. And I know that could be hard. Me personally, I probably wouldn't have walked the fuck away. You know what I'm saying? But your husband is correct. Sometimes you just got to take the other route and just let, let that shit go. Because what happens if you beat her up in the motherfucking parking lot and then you lose your place of residence? Even though you purchased that home, you, you never know what can happen. You might have some type of order protection, which is fine because she doesn't live that close close to you but it's still reality get rid of the problem you know what i'm saying it's easier to just get rid of the problem than argue and fight with her and when it comes to women and we are at a certain age like you know what i'm saying i'm 49 you 46 when you get to be like a certain age especially at our age you know what i'm saying at 40 something it's just best sometimes for you to just walk away from the problem. I know sometimes people feel like, oh, that's what a, a, a chump would do. That's what a punk would do. That's what someone scared would do. It really isn't because it takes a lot for a person to walk away from an escalation. I don't know about y'all, but it take me a minute to walk away because that one part of me is ready to sock you in your fucking mouth until you fucking cry. All right. Until you bleed. That, that's the part of me that it's hard for me to walk away from an altercation because I, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I try to be a better person person on a daily but i will fuck somebody up if they get on my bad side on that particular day i'm i promise you i have my moments okay i do have my moments because i don't like people taking advantage of me i don't like people trying to talk to me like i ain't shit i don't like people trying to look at me like well she older so we can get over no bitch you cannot I don't, I don't allow certain shit. So it takes a lot for people to walk away from an altercation. And that's you being a bigger person. When in, the, in reality, you just want to stand there and just beat the bloody post out of them. And I've, like I said, I've had my moments. I've had them in the grocery store a couple of months ago. And I didn't even tell y'all this. A couple of months ago, I had my two grandsons in the grocery store, okay? This was after school. I picked them up. We went there. We was getting a couple of things. Now... They was playing around with each other, okay? Not, they wasn't rough housing because they know don't play with me like that. And this older white lady, she came up to JJ because he's the oldest and he's a little bit taller and tinky and said to him, as I'm watching her, said to him, you better be careful because one day he's going to beat you up. And I was like, what did you just say? And she said, 
one day he's going to, I said, he's going to beat him up. I said, that's what you think? First of all, they're cousins, so ain't nobody fucking beating nobody the fuck up over here. And why are you even saying that? What makes you think it's okay for you to go up to other people's children and start saying shit like that? Well, I was just joking around with him. I said, you don't even know them to be joking around with them. And so her partner was with her. I don't know if that was her partner, but they looked like they was together. You know what I'm saying? Because she looked like somebody like Ellen DeGeneres. So she was like, come on, you just leave those people, those type of people alone. I said, those type of people, what the fuck is you referring to? She was like, I'm just, I'm just saying. I said, what you will be saying is picking your face up off the floor. Okay. That's what you will be doing. If you don't shut the F up and go on about your business. They hurried up and walked off. And my grandsons were just standing there looking at me like she's crazy. Grandma is crazy. But I'm not crazy, but you see what I'm saying? I have my moments. And when my moments come, my moments come. So like I just said, if some woman was to say that to me about my 19-year-old kid, I'm pop- I'm going to pop you in your fucking mouth, all right? I am definitely going to pop you in your motherfucking mouth and then call it a day. And I'm going to go about my business like I do on any other time. So I think your husband is correct because for one, sweetheart, you don't need your community or where you live at, people looking at you all strange. You've been living there for 11 years. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows who you are. You probably, you know what I'm saying, might be the longest person living there, but you don't need nobody looking at you any different because it's a ratchet ass hoe, okay? For real, for real. So I think like just to to, to um, alleviate the nonsense, I think you ought to go ahead and report her to the office. And not only report her to the office, but I think you should go ahead and take a police report out on her. And that way you cover yourself both ways. Some people may feel like, no, that's just doing too much. But no, because you're covering yourself, okay? Because the next time that bitch say some smart shit to you, that's when you can smack the shit out of her. So you go ahead and you report her to the office first, just like your husband said. Report her ass to the office and then also report her to the police station of how she's harassing your 19-year-old son and harassing you, knocking on your motherfucking door. And then the next time she says some smart shit or she try to run up on you, girl, smack her motherfucking lips off because you have ample proof and evidence that you tried to protect yourself. But this crazy ass Hoesha came running up on you. Shit, I wish a motherfucker would ask me about some goddamn parking spot money because I had to have your shit towed. Let me tell you something. If you park in my spot, your shit is getting the fuck towed. I'm not about to go knocking on nobody's goddamn door talking about whose car is this. That's not about to happen. Talk about, well, you could have knocked on my door. How she know that was supposed to be parked there at your house? Like, on some real shit. How did, how was Grace supposed to know that that car belonged to somebody at Hoesha's house? No, ain't nobody got time for that. You see them numbers on that fucking pavement. Bitch, you're not supposed to park there. You know that. Like she said, there's guests parking up front. Hoesha should have told them that. You gave up one of your spots. You should have told them, honey, you don't have to go. I will drive you to the guest parking spot in front and let you park your car there. I will follow you there. You know what I'm saying? I will follow you there and then you can hop in my car and we can go ahead and drive back. But you cannot park here. Bitch, please, your car would have been towed too, okay? People be weird these days and it's so sad because it be, it be grown ass older women that be on some weirdo shit. Like, on some weird old shit, you 39 years old, you trying to push up on a 19-year-old. What do y'all possibly have to fucking comment? I'm just saying, what do you have in common with a 19-year-old? Not much. Not fucking much. Yeah, girl, Grace. Grace, Grace, Grace. I'm just telling you. I had someone do that to Wuzzle. Um, well, I didn't have someone do that. Someone that um, I think they were following me. They were a subscriber or a follower of mine on Instagram. Did the same thing to my son, Wuzzle. He had showed me the DMs in the Instagram message. And it was someone who was 41 at the time. And he was probably like 20 or 21. This is right before he passed, maybe like a few months before he passed. And he showed me that some woman was trying to DM him, talking about how he was cute. He was handsome, not cute. He was handsome, trying to get to know him. You know what I did, right? I had to go onto my own Instagram and message the person and let them know, don't be disrespectful because I can find you. And when I do, I will fuck your ass up. Stay the hell away from my son. And they left him alone, apologized, you know, thought that he was of age. He is of age, but not yours. You know what I'm saying? Um, I honestly really don't understand what these older women find attractive about these young, young guys. I mean, that's definitely not my taste. Um, especially when you have children of your own at certain ages, you're just like, nah, bitch, that's not cool. And just to tell somebody that you're going to push up on a son is like unbelievable. Um, I had this young lady one time and she knew she was, when I say young lady, she was my son's age. She was Wuzzle's age. And this was after he passed away. This was probably like a year and a half after he passed away. Now, mind you, she used to live down the street from us. She lived on our block about 10 houses down, 10, 12 houses down. And her and Wuzzle were friends in high school. So she knew him. 
She came here one day to get her ends cut. I cut her ends for her. She wasn't my type of girl. Like, you know, I just, I get vibes from people and I really didn't care for her, especially because she had played Ding Door Ditch one night. And this was when my grandson was a baby and woke him up and ran down the street like, don't do that shit. Cause I don't, I don't really like shit like that. I don't, don't ring my motherfucking doorbell and run the fuck off. And I didn't have no ring camera at the time, but we seen you, we seen you. You had on them yellow shorts. We seen you earlier that day. We seen what you ran to. Anyway, I seen her about a year and a half about a year and a half after my son Wozzle passed away. And she seen me in a grocery store. You know, she came up to me. She spoke to me. Now, mind you, she was, I think, I do believe she was at his, you know, his um, services, his funeral services. I can't remember, but I do think she was. And when she saw me in the grocery store, she was talking to me. She said, how am I doing? And such and such. And I, you know, I replied to her. Did this young lady say to me how, I can't not remember her exact words, but she basically said that her and my son were intimate with one another. Yo, it took me by surprise. When I tell you that shit took me by surprise, and I, I didn't even know what to say. I was ready to cuss her the fuck out, but I just stood there and I was like, oh, okay. Mm, okay. And what happened was I ended up telling Tati when I came home, and Tati took care of her for me. But, yeah. Certain things people and women just, I just don't get. You, you just don't say. And telling someone that you was intimate with their son and their son is no longer here on this earth is real tacky and hoish. And then to tell somebody that you're going to push up on a son at the age of 39 and their son is 19 is real hoish, desperate, weird, and all type of things that I don't want to even say on this camera. But Grace, give her no more grace and go report her ass and go ahead and get you a police report made due to the fact that she's harassing your under 21 year old son. And the next time she run up on you, I don't like to promote violence, but I'm, I'm sorry. You're not going to harass my child. That's one thing that I'm not gonna deal with. I'm not gonna allow anybody to harass my children, sexually harass my children, and not at all. Definitely not at all. So I really do think your husband is correct. You do need to report her to the office and you do need to report her to the police. And if she ring your doorbell again, which I hopefully, hopefully she does it, then I would definitely knock her upside the head. And if you hear, if you see her in the park a lot and she's asking you about that money, just let her know. If you can get blood from a stone, honey, then you know I got your money. Until then, you won't get shit. And I suggest you stop running your mouth. Period. Let her know what y'all would do in this situation. I don't know. People are really getting weirder and weirder over the years. Um, this was this was a lot. This wasn't really even a lot, but I just feel like some people be just doing too much and some women are just too sexual. They just... Just think with the wrong part of their body. And you know how we used to say that about men, like, oh, they think with the wrong part of their body. Women are like that, too. And I never knew that there was so many sexually women like that. But there really, really is. And it's like, wow. Even the rap songs, like, you know what I'm saying? Why, why are you talking about your booty hole in the rap song, females? Like, I think that's just so disgusting. But, you know, who am I? Maybe I'm approved. But I just find some things to just be a little bit, like, keep it on the low. We don't all need to know, okay? So let's get on to the next real talk. Let Grace know what you would do down in the right, comments. So this one she titled, They Always Have Beef, Real Talk. Hey, April, how are you and the family? And may I say, for someone about to have their sixth grandchild, you look amazing and look like no one else's grandmother, look like no one's grandmother. You know they say, you know the same, black don't cry, girl. Oh, thank you very much. But I be feeling like the grandmother, trust me. So April, listen to this nonsense. My name is Eve and I'm going to be 30 in July. You can call me Eve. So my mother has four kids. There are two boys and two girls. And me and my brother are the eldest. We are twins. And then my other brother is 25 and my sister is 22. And she and the 25-year-old still live at home with our mother. My mother is a single mother now. Our father passed away due to COVID in 2020. My mother has been getting through it. They were high school sweethearts. But unfortunately, my father had health issues prior to COVID. But my mother has been holding up and doing well. So anyway, this is about my siblings who reside with her. And maybe it's time for the baby sis to move out because she's the most disgusting human being in my eyes. She constantly is arguing with my mother and brother about cleaning the house and not wanting to, and not wanting to clean the house, not wanting to pick up after herself, wash dishes, vacuum. It's gotten out of hand. Her room looks disgusting, but it's not even about her room. It's about her mouth. She says some outrageous shit to my mother, like, you're just miserable because daddy ain't here. Don't take your misery out on me. My mother has told her she needs to move out. She refuses to. She argues with my brother when he brings his son over to visit, who is five saying he's too loud, 
He's too greedy. She just never knows how to shut her mouth and be respectful to others. I have went over to my mother's house countless times to defuse the situation, and she and I have literally gotten into a fist fight. My mother and my 25-year-old brother had to pull us apart. I'm so sick of her. Um, my mother is visible with her living there. She doesn't do shit all day. No job, no school, no goals. I hate to say this, but she's a loser, and I need her to be gone from my mother's house. Please, what would you do? Because I'm at my wit's end. Thank you, Eve. What I tell y'all? I told y'all this time and time again that family is the ones that will do you in. Y'all think that it be friends or some random ass strangers, but it be family because family be feeling like they are so entitled to get what the fuck they want. Let me tell y'all something. When you at a certain age, you either going to be there respectfully and help your family and you know what I'm saying? Or you going to get the fuck out like straight up. Like there's no reason for you to be there if you're going to be disrespectful to your mother and you don't want to clean shit. Girl, no. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is what your mama should do. This is my opinion. OK, because sometimes it takes some some tough love to get your point across. And don't nobody always want to do tough love on their kids or friends or family members. But sometimes it does take that. And what she, your mama going to need to do is get her removed from her house. That's exactly what she's going to have to do. If she's being disrespectful to your mother by talking reckless and out of her mouth, then your mother needs to go and make a police report, a order of protection, and then they can move her out the house. Like straight up, that's what happens. Has happened. That is what's going to have to happen. Been there, done that. The thing that I don't understand is why would anybody want to live in filth? Now, her room being filthy is one thing, but if you are 22 years old and you're not trying to pick up after yourself and clean up after yourself, then that seems like a you problem. And you and your problem need to be somewhere else. But it's it's fucked up that Eve has co had to come over there on countless times and defuse the situation and ended up in a fist fight with her own sister. It sucks because I hate to see siblings going back, going at it with one another. Y'all are family. I really don't think that family should be acting like that. To, with one another. Granted, I've never had any type of altercations or physical fights with any of my siblings because I'm the oldest, you know. I am 13 years older than my sister. I am tw 12 years older than one of my brothers and I think like 8 or 10 or 9 or 10 years older than my other brother. So I'm the oldest out of all of them. And then plus also I forgot, I do have another sister. Um, she's probably like 24 now, something like that. Mariah. I'm, so I'm the oldest. I'm the oldest out of all of them. So why would I ever have like an altercation or a physical fight with any of them? So I don't really know what it's like to grow up and be arguing with siblings. But when you get like a certain age, like a grown up age, I really don't feel like siblings should be fighting with each other because you should know better by now, especially because y'all are family. And I don't feel like family should be fighting with one another. But I understand that people do have disagreements, but you have to learn to agree to disagree. But when it comes to the point where you have to physically put your hands on another family member, then it's just not worth your sanity, like straight up. But sometimes we do need to put our hands on people to shut them the fuck up, get them to STFU because you are being disrespectful to not just my mother, but your mother, our mother. And I'm gonna have to get my point across. And yeah, the mother is probably older because she's got four kids, okay? So who knows how old the mama is? I, I would think she's at least, at, okay, so Grace, uh, I called her Grace. Eve is 30, she'll be 30 in July. So this woman has to be at least 50 or up, okay? I'm just thinking. And when you get to a certain age, ain't nobody trying to be fucking breaking up no fights and ain't nobody trying to be putting their hands on nobody either. Like, I think like at my age, we done been through enough. We are not trying to be in part of no drama. That's why I was saying to Grace, go report her. Go report that lady next door neighbor of yours to the office and to the police so that way you ain't got to physically harm her but it might have to come down to it because she is also sexually harassing her child so that's the difference like i don't really promote violence I, i'm not gonna promote violence but when it comes to your kids you have to defend them but now we have eve who is um 20 i'm about to say 20 uh, 30 years old. We have Eve, who's 30 years old, and she's trying to protect her mother and her other sibling from this cackling 22-year-old. Yeah, your mother should really remove her from her home, Eve. There's nothing like a sweet old order of protection from the police department, and they will come and remove her off the premises. And when you don't have no goals in life, like she's 22, she ain't got no job, she don't have no schooling, she ain't got no goals, she keep a filthy, dirty room, then what the fuck she do all day? Because if she ain't got no job and she don't go to school, girl, she got enough time to clean and cook and, and, and all that and look for a job or look for a school to go to. I'm just saying, get your priorities together. My thing is this, sometimes you have to walk away from the toxic people in your life and it's too bad that they are family. But I say this to y'all all the time and I don't mean no harm by it, but family be the ones that always be trying to get you in. They always trying to walk all over you. They always trying to do you dirty. They always feel entitled. Yes, baby, it be the family.
because they feel like they're entitled. Trust me when I tell you, I know this person. Okay. So what I would tell your mama, Eve, is to take her ass down to the police station and give herself a good old police report, good old order of protection. So that way her daughter can be removed if that's what she really want to do. Because it don't seem like she's going to stop. She's 22 years old. She's going to just keep talking reckless to your mama. And it's called tough love. She's going to have to find somewhere to live. She wouldn't be staying in my house. So she's staying in your, your mama's house rent-free, regardless if she owns the house or whatever she's living in. She's staying there rent-free because she ain't got no job. So how does she get money, okay? And we got the 25-year-old who has a 5-year-old son that comes over to visit, and she's talking reckless, talking about he's too greedy, he's too loud. Well, bitch, take your ass and go some fucking where. Take your ass and go stay with a friend or another family member or they got shelters for people like you too, okay? That's what I would let her know. Um, I, listen, let me tell y'all something. I am not about to be dealing with or putting up with nobody else's bullshit. Not, not in my ripe age, not in my home, not on my time. I'm not putting up with nobody's bullshit. I just not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And I don't really think like once, once you raise your children and they are at a certain age, if they can't learn to respect you and be the person that they're supposed to be, then it's time to wash your hands of them and block them. You know, like I, I've said this to you guys before. I blocked my son, not Wuzzle. I've never had to block him. But my eldest son, the one who's about to go to prison, you know, to the feds, I've blocked him numerous times off my phone, off my social media, because his mouth is reckless. And I don't know about you, but you're not about to argue with me. And I am your mama. No, nah, honey, I will have to come over to your motherfucking house and put you out, put your lights out, okay? Put your motherfucking lights out. You're not about to talk to me any old type of way. And so I have to block him. And when I tell you I will block him for months at a time, one time it was like six, seven months. It was like a couple years ago. I don't play those games. You're not about to be disrespectful to me. I don't give a fuck who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like I said this before, I don't give a fuck who you are are don't be disrespectful to me all right if i'm not disrespectful to you don't be disrespectful to me and then feel like you're gonna have your way with me and and get away with shit and live here or come around me nah it don't work like that in the real world it does not work like that and you know what's so crazy i had to block him and me and my mother got into an altercation about it because he told her and she's always on his side never on my other kids sides never check up on him but that's that's not neither here nor there but she got an attitude with me because I blocked him. You don't realize how he's disrespectful to me, but it's okay. And I'm supposed to not block him. I had to stop talking to her for a while because she became disrespectful to me about me blocking my own son. Girl, listen, it's fine to block people. It's fine to have them get the fuck out. It's fine to block them from your life. It's fine because all these toxic people are going to do is block your motherfucking blessings. And why allow somebody to block your blessings and block your sanity when you could just block them and be done with them? Like straight up, be done with the motherfucking bitches and leave them alone. Tell your mother to take her ass to the police station, Eve, and file a police report against your sister and have her removed because she has no right staying there in your mother's home, not paying for shit, not cleaning for shit, and having a disgusting ass mouth she's lucky she still got lips and teeth left because if that was my kid you would have no lips and you would have no fucking teeth and you would have no ass to sit on because i'm a soup be, be too busy be too busy picking the shit out of you okay in it that's my that that's my suggestion that's that's my that's my suggestion you know what i'm saying too much disrespect going on in this world too much and I'm, I'm definitely not here for it. Like, I feel like I'm grown. I, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Yeah, sometimes I do come off a little bit pushy. Sometimes I do come off a little bit aggressive. I don't mean no harm. Sometimes even in these Real Talk videos, I might come off aggressive. But if I find that your email is some bullshit and you being disrespectful or you being aggressive or you making no sense or you being on some nonsense bullshit, then I'm going to tell you about yourself, okay? I'm definitely going to let you know what type of person you are. This is called Real Talk, and I never try to offend nobody, but I'm just trying to be real with you and let you know what the real deal is. Eve, tell your mother to go to the police station, and it's probably going to be hard for her because that is her child, but I can only imagine her heartache because I've been there. Okay. So you guys, I'm gonna leave y'all with that to think about, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all check the description box. I will link. Well, I'll try to link. I will. I'll link everything that I showed you guys in this video in the description box, like all my beauty products, because you can get all of them from Amazon except for the Equate. But I, you know what I'm saying? I will link everything down below. Once again, I thank you all for your love and support on my channel, along with your love and support to my family. I hope you guys was able to check my recent vlog video. 
that I posted last week. If not, then please go ahead and check it out. Check all the real talks out that you have missed on my channel. Please make sure to check the description box for all of the products that I use. Along with that, I am also going to be linking the baby registry in the description box below. So I ask you all, please, to just take a look at it and donate to the baby registry if possible. Thank you all for your support. I'm very grateful and appreciative to all of you. I love you all. I hope you all have like an amazing day whenever you're watching this. Stay blessed, stay safe, stay out the way. You know, mind your business. And also stay diva and devolicious. Send me an email if you want a real talk, okay? Girl, I love you all and I will see y'all in the next one.